Today we're talking about the pros and cons to purchasing a existing short-term rental and we're getting to it right now. My name is June Kranick and on this channel we talk about all things as it's related to the short-term rental industry. So today we're talking about the pros and cons to purchasing an existing property. So, you know, this is a question that I get quite a bit. Should I purchase brand new or should I buy one that's already up and running? So let's talk about the pros first and we will talk about the cons last. So stick around to the end of the video so you can hear all of the cons as well. So first and foremost, the nice part about purchasing a short-term rental that's already been used as a short-term rental is the obvious turnkey. You have, everything is set up there for you. Towels, dishes, pots, pans, games, uh, furniture, obviously. I mean, all of the little nuances, maybe even things that you don't even think about. You know, all of the things in the, the kitchen, the little tiny things down to a wine, you know, a corkscrew opener. Is that what you call it? I don't know, I don't drink wine. Um, so all of those things, they make a difference and they really do add up. So the first pro is the obvious, and that is it's a turnkey operation. The second pro is it's quicker to market. I mean, you purchase, you close, and literally the next day, you can have it up on Airbnb and getting reservations or whatever, you know, you can decide VRBO, Airbnb, or direct bookings. So that's another great pro to purchasing an existing short-term rental is that it's quick to the market. The third pro is revenue data. Typically, when you are purchasing a short-term rental property that has already been in existence, they have revenue data to back it up. So if a, if a seller wants to really sell their property, they're going to produce that data for you to see. Now there are some caveats. You have to make sure that the owner hasn't used that property a lot when you look at the um, revenue. And also bear in mind that if the revenue is not there, it could very well be that the prior owners weren't great hosts. That exists. So you can look at that data and say, okay, it's at 50,000 in revenue, how can I get it to 80,000? And some tweaks that take you above the competition can make all the difference in the world. So sometimes revenue data can be a slippery slope and can be a con as well if you're not cautious. So the fourth pro is that you have future bookings already set up and also not to mention repeat guests. When you're taking over a property that's already been up and running on um, Airbnb or VRBO, you have already bookings set up. So that, de that depends on if you can truly have them pass the baton. There's pros and cons on that. But more importantly, you have people that are gonna be repeat guests. So that is a really nice pro to having a property that's already been in existence is that you have people that that are going to come back time and time again. So the fifth pro is sometimes there's already has, you already have licensing in place and some cities allow you just to transfer it. So you don't have to get new licensing, it can just be transferred. And that's something to think about as well is that there's certain areas where let's say they only allow 20 um, short-term rental properties and that person has one of the 20 you get that transferred to you. So that is a huge perk and a huge benefit and always make sure it's transferable if that's the situation, that they limit the amount of short-term rental properties in that area. But that is a huge plus. Uh, another huge uh, pro to this is the neighbors are already acclimated to the shenanigans. And what I mean by shenanigans is people in and out multiple cars, maybe sometimes people um, being up a little later than normal or God forbid being a little loud. But when you have neighbors that are already like, hey, we're cool with it, that's another huge pro is that you do not have to worry about the neighbors raising all kinds of grief and uh, you'll have a smooth business. And then, you know, the last thing I wanna say is that I had, um, 
I had a client purchase a property here in Orlando and I'll never forget the realtor was it was it was owner it was owned by the realtor and she told me never will I buy a brand new short-term rental again she said the amount of money we had to continue to put into it because we forgot about an iron an ironing board knickknacks things on the wall all that stuff you have to really look through all that lens so um, that's the pros and uh, there's a lot of pros and there's also um, opportunities there's a website that allows you to look at existing short-term rental properties that have data so I will put that in the description so that you can check that out so with all good things come some what some not good things so let's talk about the cons first and foremost one of the biggest cons can be it's not your style um, the furniture could be very dated the furniture may be worn out and or could be super cheap so sometimes um, you may you know things look great on the MLS and then when you go in not so great so this is something to keep an eye out I had a client recently reach out and she said well I know that if I can decorate it I can make it unique in an area like Orlando Florida you have to think outside the box because there are over a hundred thousand short-term rental properties here so how do you make your property stand out and be unique and that's what she felt she had to bring to the table so maybe buy an existing property not a good thing a second con to this is there's not as many choices because everyone wants the winning lottery ticket I can't tell you how many people call me and they're like okay so I want a property that yields a really high ROI around 300,000 maybe 250 250,000 in Orlando Florida that has a great ROI no it doesn't exist you have to be realistic so a lot of people are looking for the golden goose so bear that in mind is sometimes you don't have as many choices so that can definitely be a con for you the third con is it it can be discouraging when you go and you look and you're like okay the house is seven hundred thousand dollars and they only did fifty eight thousand in revenue before taxes mortgage insurance all the different people cleaning handyman so okay so then that's when you take a look at it and you say how do we make it a better experience who in the neighborhood doesn't have a hot tub even though I don't know why people love hot tubs I just don't love them does that make me weird um, you really have to take a look in that area to see how you can stand out now if you're in the Smoky Mountains and it gets cold I can see a hot tub people really love a hot tub um, I guess a private hot tub is much better than maybe one at down near the pool area of the hotel but anyway you really have to take an opportunity and maybe not get discouraged like I said earlier it's a pro and a con so you don't get discouraged by the revenue you just look at how do I increase it lastly once again you really have to take a look at if the owner had been using it for many many weeks and more specifically if they're using it what weeks are they using it so I had a client and they were looking at a property and the and the owners were using it like spring break here in Orlando that's a big big money time May not so much September not so much March April so much so you have to really break it down and understand okay maybe the revenue isn't high because the owner took it for six weeks in some of the peak times of the year so once again this can be a con the other con is like I said sometimes in the MLS things look really pretty have your realtor whether it be myself or somebody else go to the property if you are not local have them go not buying sight unseen go look you know look under the um, what do they say look under the hood yes I went and you know I had a client it's a six hundred thousand dollar house and he wanted to buy it I was like don't do it and um, sometimes I feel like I was being stupid but it's the right thing it's being 
you know, having integrity. It's the right thing. If that place is kind of beat up, well, then maybe that's a negotiation tool um, with, with the sellers because now it's not as crazy as it used to be. Or um, you can factor in that you're going to have to put some love into it. So these are all things to consider, all the pros, all the cons to purchasing a short-term rental that is existing. But I can tell you, if you want less headaches, it's probably the route for you. So remember today, we were talking about that, um, you know, whether or not you should purchase a short-term that's already been in existence. But if that's not what you're looking for, you gotta let us know, reach out, let us know exactly what it is that you want to see so we can get those videos out to you right away. So remember, if you're thinking about purchasing a short-term rental property in Orlando, Florida, or Florida in general, well then send us a text, give us a call, send us an email, however you wish to connect, because we got you covered when it comes to moving or comes to investing in Orlando or Florida in general. And we will see you on the next video. Bye for now.